Good evening and welcome to this joint public hearing on the Transportation System Plan. And Good morning. Good evening. Welcome to Harris Hall. Uh, this is a meeting of the Board of Lane County Commissioners. I convene this meeting. Did I say good morning? Might have. <laughs> <laughs> we keep the curtains closed. So. Uh, City Manager, would you like to give a few words? Thanks, Mayor. Tonight is the second joint public hearing on the Eugene 2035 Transportation System Plan and a package of amendments to the Metro Plan and Trans Plan. The City Council will also be considering associated changes to the Eugene Code, adoption of a street classification map, an amendment to Ordinance Number 20528 to remote, remove limitations to density imposed by the previous transportation system plan and to repeal the central area transportation study. The Eugene 2035 TSP provides a 20-year blueprint for the city of Eugene's transportation system and will ultimately serve as the transportation element of the Envision Eugene Comprehensive Plan. The Eugene 2035 TSP was developed based on extensive stakeholder input, analysis of our existing transportation system, and close, close coordination with the Envision Eugene planning process. We'll also uh, distribute, uh, we've received numbers of comments uh, online and we'll distribute those out to you later on um, this week. Thank you. Ah, good county. Good, good evening, Mr. Toad. Before you proceed, I'll mention that uh, Commissioner Lycan is excused this evening on family business. Okay. Thank you, Chair Farr, Mayor, Commissioners, Council. Welcome, Commissioner Williams. I'm Becky Taylor, Senior Transportation Planner for Lane County. This is the second reading and second public hearing for Lane County's co-adoption of the Eugene Transportation System Plan. The, le the first reading and public hearing uh, was on March 6th. Please refer to the March 6th agenda packet for the co-adoption package. Um, at that first hearing, both bodies unanimously agreed to provide the second public hearing. Again, the purpose of tonight's hearing is to hear from the public, so I will once again keep my staff presentation brief. Uh, deliberations and action will be scheduled at a later date. No action is recommended tonight. And encourage you to keep a running list of questions that you may hear uh, in the testimony tonight so that at the close of the hearing, you can have an opportunity to ask staff any questions. Uh, and instead of trying to respond to questions tonight, um, I'll be tracking those to respond as part of subsequent deliberations process to enable thoughtful uh, responses. And unless you have an, any immediate questions about the public hearing process, that concludes my staff presentation. To the board, any questions? I see none. Okay. Uh, I've just a reminder that those wishing to speak during the public hearing must uh, submit a completed request to speak form to the information desk prior to the meeting. Uh, when you come to the podium, please give your name, city of residence, and for Eugene residents, your ward, if known. You will have three minutes to comment. There are lights on the timer. Uh, the red light indicates the end of three minutes. So our first speaker is Fred Merton followed by Jean Rubel. My name is Fred Merton. I live at 1833 Lake Creek Avenue. My wife Gretchen and I have lived in Lakeshore Estates on Ayers Road for 17 years. I'm here to express our concern along with many, many of our North Gillum neighbors about the addition of yet another large housing development in North Delta. Extensive infrastructure must be in place to deal with the current traffic congestion. The North Delta Beltline interchange is at the top of the list of vehicular accidents in the Eugene area. We can't simply widen North Delta and shove hundreds of more cars along with gravel trucks through the same funnel. And then, of course, there is still the Beltline and the bridge across the Willamette River. A Band-Aid will not heal those broken bones. We invite you to our neighborhood to spend adequate time observing current traffic issues, not only on Delta, North Delta, and Beltline, but on Cal Young, Crescent, 
Green Acres, and even curvy little Ayers Road, <coughs> now being used as a thoroughfare for gravel trucks. We are ur urging you, along with the state, to put in the infrastructure needed before approving any more housing developments. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Jean Rubel, followed by Dennis Gardner. I second Mr. Merton's comments. The fifth of the seven pillars of the interminable Envision Eugene project directs planners and officials to protect and enhance neighborhood livability. We know Eugene is growing. We know people need places to live. However, we don't have the infrastructure in our area to support up to 3,000 more vehicle trips every single day as it was tonight coming to this meeting, Delta northbound from Valley River Center past Lake Ridge where I live was a parking lot. I can't imagine what 1,500, 2,000 more cars added to that will mean for us. Our community has only one entrance, entrance exit. It opens onto Delta Highway. There are no merge lanes, and there are no left turn lanes on Delta. We're going to be trapped. If there were a natural disaster, how do we get out? And if there were a natural disaster, there's a bridge across the neck of Ayers Lake. A bad earthquake could bring that down. Then what about the thousands of people who live north of Ayers Road? They're stuck, and the people who can get out on airs, perhaps, are going to block us. What about the existing gravel trucks? They drive 50, 60 miles an hour past our gate. There's a stop sign, or there should be for them, at airs and Delta. They don't stop. They don't even slow down. How about EMT and fire response time? It's pretty good right now. Pack another 3,000 vehicle trips a day onto that stretch of highway. Not too sure what's going to happen. How much more congested is Delta and Beltline Interchange going to become? ODOT admits it's going to be at least 20 years until that build out is completed. In the Envision Eugene process, the city committed to keeping existing neighborhoods livable. I encourage you to think about the questions that I and other people from our area will ask tonight before you make your decisions and recommendations. Thank you. Excuse me, Jean, will you state your name and address for the record, please? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Jean Rubel, R-U-B-E-L. I live at Lake Ridge, 3355 North Delta Highway. Thank you. <clears throat> Next is Dennis Gardner, followed by Mark Rabinowitz. My name is Dennis Gardner. I live at uh, north uh, at the north end of Delta Highway in a senior uh, gated community referred to as Lake Ridge Eugene, 3355 North Delta Highway. I'm sorry, I don't know the ward I'm in. On the city of Eugene's webpage, the following statement appears for the council's vision, goals, and outcomes. And I quote, be responsible stewards, <clears throat> excuse me, be responsible stewards of our physical assets and natural resources. We will sustain our clean air and water, beautiful parks and open spaces, livable and safe neighborhoods, and foster a vibrant community, including stable infrastructure. Let me emphasize that a stable infrastructure does not describe the Randy Pape Beltline and specifically the Delta Highway Interchange. Since as early as 2005, the Beltline has been referred to as, quote, inadequate, and quote, unable to support current traffic volume. These quotes come from previous Oregon Department, uh, excuse me, Oregon Department of Transportation reports. Now is the time and opportunity to make changes to this critical exchange in the Beltline 
The city's in the process of granting permits for construction of new subdivisions on both the east and west sides of North Delta Highway. These proposed developments would add an estimated 600 new housing units. The city has the opportunity to request from these developers some of the construction costs to improve the Beltline interchange and Green Acres and North Delta Highway intersection. These improvements are, improvements are essential to keep traffic flowing, reduce accidents, and allow emergency vehicles access. If the, if the developers decline, I'm sure the city will receive other offers to build homes on this desirable land. The city of Eugene is growing at an accelerated rate. Take advantage of this opportunity and improve our community without placing a tax burden on the existing residents, some of whom don't even use the Beltline. Please, ladies and gentlemen, do your job and take appropriate action to restore the Randy Pape Beltline exchange and Green Acres intersection up to not only current demand standards, but also accommodate the future needs of what will, uh, which we all hope will be a vibrant, beautiful community that attracts positive, sustainable business and that families want to live in. If the interchange and intersection are not upgraded, it will leave thousands of frustrated motorists using this decayed infrastructure, causing more accidents and loss of life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up is Mark Rabinowitz, followed by Matt McRae. Okay, round two. So last month when you had a hearing on this, um, there was not much discussion of Beltline expansion. The largest single component of this plan is the proposed widening of Beltline in North Eugene. Options include 10 and 11 lanes wide, quarter billion dollars, third of a billion, maybe more. And you're adopting this plan would give ODOT the local legal approval to spend millions of our dollars to study this widening. There are efforts to expand bicycle projects and public transit, but in terms of funding, the Beltline expansion would be by far larger than all the others combined. Last month, an ODOT official claimed that the construction would somehow be sustainable, but no specifics were given about how the concrete, asphalt, and steel would be made without generating pollution. Federal law states that federally funded highway projects must consider transportation demand two decades in the future. Your assumptions assume that traffic's gonna continue growing ad infinitum forever and ever and ever, even though according to ODOT, vehicle miles traveled peaked in Lane County in 2003 and statewide in 2002. As oil prices started to go up, travel growth ended. We're at peak traffic, not less traffic, so traffic is still high, but it's not getting higher. Our transportation systems are powered by oil from the Alaska pipeline, which peaked in 1988 at two million barrels a day, and now is a half a million barrels a day, nearing the low flow shutdown. The pipeline's contents must remain above freezing in the winter because once it freezes solid, it's not gonna reopen. They're throttling it back in the summers to keep enough capacity in the winter, and that, if you have millions to spend on studies, is what you should be looking at, not pretending that in 2035, we're gonna have 30% more car traffic We'll have oil rationing if we're lucky. A smaller part of this project would be to realign the ramps at Delta and Beltline. This would not prepare us to reduce travel demand at, on the downslope of oil, nor would it reduce greenhouse gas emissions, but it would be useful for the remaining years of peak traffic, and you would not need a multi-million dollar study to do the ramp realignment. If we were really concerned about safety and preventing accidents, we would require driver's license renewals to include safety testing, including asking people to know whether they need to cede the right of way to other motorists, cyclists, and pedestrians. And given that we live in a society where some people type on cell phones instead of paying attention to their driving, biking, or walking, it's clear we lack a commitment to safety. Finally, growth for the sake of growth is the ideology of the cancer cell. We need to be cured from that. Thank you. 
Next up is Matt McRae, followed by Mike Phillips. Hello, Council and Commissioners. My name is Matt McRae. My address is 2584 Friendly Street in Eugene. I'm in Council, Councillor Semple's ward and Commissioner Sorensen's district. Thank you both for your service. Much appreciated. Uh, whether we see it this way or not, our transportation system plan is not just a transportation policy document. It's a social, economic, and environmental policy document. According to a social survey that was done as a part of this transportation planning uh, the, the, with the, the TSP, Eugene's TSP, 18 to 34 year old residents are twice as likely to take to the bus as those residents over the age of, 30, of 55. Lower income residents, those who make less than $25,000, take the bus four times more often and walk twice as much as residents making more than $55,000. Do you feel like the plan in front of you meets these population's needs? Um, it's a question for all of you to, to contemplate. As far as economic policy, do you know how much Eugene drivers spend on gas and diesel every year? It's $150 million in 2016 based on ODOT records. It's a remarkable amount of money. Um, tragically, very few of these dollars stay here in Eugene. And in fact, the federal government tells us that some 70 cents of every dollar spent on, on fuel goes directly to Shell, Exxon, BP, and other out-of-state companies who drill and refine that fuel. So if you bear me with me for just a moment, some 70% of $150 million, so $100 million every year immediately exported from our local economy when we construct a transportation system that keeps us reliant on fossil fuels, we construct a system that keeps exporting our dollars. I believe we can do better. Thankfully, with your commitment to climate action, City Council has indicated a desire to steer us in a new direction. But this TSP is not steering us in a new direction. How would we know if it was? The spending would reflect a significant departure from spending in the past toward projects that serve all modes and away from projects that serve only automobiles. The TSP would include an aggressive and detailed transportation demand management plan, including parking pricing and congestion pricing to help us meet those goals. It would tell us, the readers, using data from modeling already available from LCOG, that the plan in front of us was going to meet Council's energy goals. Finally, it would clearly state that safety, no lives lost and no major injuries, was the most important goal. It is you, our city councilors, who are driving the bus here. Please grab onto the steering wheel and point this TSP towards a safer, more just, and more economically sound, and more sustainable future. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Phillips, followed by John Faville. My name is Mike Phillips. I live at uh, 1685 Sand Trap Lane, which is in Ashley Estates which is adjacent to the River Ridge uh, Golf property. Um, some problems that, uh, that we now have, uh, number one, uh, the, the uh, North Delta from Ayers Road to Green Acres is too narrow to support the traffic that we now have uh, including the the heavy use of truck traffic and also the bike lanes are so narrow that they're unsafe especially with the uh, center islands that are there that are poorly maintained by the city uh, yeah the traffic coming uh, from Lake Ridge onto Delta North Delta um, is very unsafe. Uh, they have to wait for traffic coming from both directions to get out onto Delta Highway. And there have been accidents there. Um, the heavy uh, truck traffic coming from the rock quarry just covers Delta Highway with mud in the winter time and it's just full of dust in, in, the, uh, in the, the dry weather. Um, the speed limit now is 40 miles per hour, which is too high. The trucks go uh, 45 to 50, 
through there, um, along with uh, automobiles, of course. Some suggestions that I have, one would be to widen Delta Highway between Ayers Road and Green Acres Road and add sidewalks and bike lanes that are wide enough to be safe. Right now, they're so narrow that uh, you, with these center islands, you have to uh, negotiate and, and slow down to a, a crawl to miss these bicycles. Um, another thing that uh, I think should happen is to remove the center islands, uh, get the trees out of there. I mean, we've got trees that are still uh, from the last storm that are, are laying down in the center islands. And, and the city can't even maintain these center islands. Um, add the uh, sidewalks and uh, bike lanes, lower the speed limit to 35 miles per hour, and install a radar uh, speed monitor so that people can see how fast they're going. And when they go too fast, they uh, Thank are you. reminded. Thank you. Thank you very much. John Faville followed by Jim Higgins. Hello, Mayor and uh, Commissioners and Councillors. My name is John Favell. I live in Ward 5 at 2216 Marie Lane. Um, I spoke at the hearing several weeks ago. I'm back. And you've heard from uh, Northeast neighbors, neighbors why I'm here, and it's because of the mammoth developments going in along North Delta. And I, I don't want to talk more about the uh, issues that it's raising, but I want to ask for a specific step which is an inclusion in TSP 2035 of a new project that addresses the local streets that lead into the interchange. And you know, the Beltline is already uh, pretty expensively addressed w within TSP 2035. I'm asking that a project look at, in particular, Green Acres, look at North Delta Highway, look at Ayers. Uh, we don't propose a specific solution and say widen this, take out that, do that. We just want the attention given by knowledgeable planners who are going to look at the, treat the issue not piecemeal but on a global basis and figure out how to solve our problems. We're asking that it not be included as a study but it be listed as an actual project in section 5.1 for roadway, multimodal and transit because that really gives it the kind of priority we think it deserves. I'm also asking a specific specifically the uh, Eugene Council, to direct the planners to then take the step of investing the time and looking at these problems and then including the remedies for it in the capital uh, improvement plan as that time comes. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you. We have submitted written comments, by the way, that includes suggested wording. So I just want to say that. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Jim Higgins, followed by Susan Smith. Good evening. I'm Jim Higgins. I live at uh, 3355 North Delta Highway. Lake, I'm a Lake Ridge Senior Park resident. And I'm very concerned about the uh, additional traffic that's going to be generated by these hundreds of homes that are proposed uh, throughout the, well, hundreds uh, throughout the area there north of uh, where we live. Uh, they again. Uh, somebody. Uh, I want to endorse the comments of Gene Rubel and the other resident who spoke re from Lake Ridge as well. The speed limit on Delta Highway is treated as no more than a suggestion by passenger cars and by all these stinking dump trucks that go up and down that road at 50, 60 miles an hour. And they're not just single dump trucks. They're Tr uh, double and, and maybe even triple, I'm not sure. But getting behind them, you take a, ch a big chance with your windshield. Um, the access has been mentioned from Lake Ridge. We have one exit, one entrance exit that's also our way to get out. Um, there needs to be a signal there if we're going to be dealing with hundreds of more cars or thousands of more cars on a daily basis. Uh, it's unsafe as it is. Uh, at different times of the day, and people are going to get killed there, and the city will regret not addressing the situation when it happens. Um, <clears throat> there are 300 residents 
in Lake Ridge, roughly. And uh, they come and go, with doctor's appointments, you name it. You know, they're, they're retired people and they have, uh, they, they, you know, some of them drive motorhomes and what have you. So it's, a, it's, it's an important problem. Um, that pretty much covers what uh, I would say about the traffic, other than, again, endorsing what was said before by the other residents. I'm also concerned about habitat. Uh, with the demise of the golf course, I, I don't know what they're planning to do in the way of keeping keeping the habitat viable there with trees and what have you. Uh, there's a lot of wildlife around there right now, and I, I well, I feed birds a lot, and there are a whole lot of birds, hawks, and and uh, songbirds as well. And uh, if we destroy uh, too many trees, they're going to destroy the habitat for many many animals. So thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, I don't know what ward I'm in, so you know. Right. Right. Uh, next is Susan Smith, followed by Ann Daughtry. Good evening. Um, my name is Susan Smith, and I live at Lake Ridge, <coughs> 3355 North Delta Highway. Um, I concur with everything that's been said by my fellow residents. I just have questions of the transportation and the council. Uh, do you take into consideration when you approve, um, like Evergreen, that is, I think, currently before you, this project, do you do traffic analysis studies before you approve the development, or do you wait until the development is built and then look at the situation? That's one of my questions. And secondly, um, in the Register Guard, um, there was an article that indicated um, about this evergreen, that the development, um, the nines has already been developed, Evergreen is under proposal, but then it indicated that Chris Henry, who I don't know, um, Eugene's transportation <laughs> planning engineer, points out that such growth has been planned for. My question is, what is he planned for in, in the way of alleviating the transportation problems that are sure to exist? Thank you. Thank you. And Daughtry followed by Jim New. Good evening. My name is Ann Daughtry. <clears throat> I live at Lake Ridge. 300 plus people, 190 homes, one entry and exit. Should we need to evacuate, it will take days. I ask that North Delta Highway be widened to include turn lanes. The speed limit, which is currently 40 and ignored by 95% of the drivers, lowered to 25 or 30. A vehicle activated traffic light be installed at our single gate so that we can safely exit to get to medical appointments, grocery stores, other activities and bus service be extended so that when we do get to the point where we can't drive anymore because it is a senior park, there will be some other way rather than dial a ride or whatever it's called. I spoke with the city planner at the last meeting that we had up in our neighborhood, the Northeast neighbors. And he said, well, you know, you could turn right out of uh, Lake Ridge, turn right on Ayers Road, turn right on Gillum, turn right on Crescent, and then turn left into um, Delta Highway to go south. That's a planner? Thank you very much. Jim New, followed by Mayor Mark Crenshaw. Good 
Good evening. My name is Jim New. I live in Ward 7. Um, the Climate Re Recovery Ordinance, its goals and benchmarks must be considered when implementing the Transportation System Plan with regard to quantifying emission reductions for every traffic and housing project. The Mayor and Council should request of staff to clarify the implementation of the TSP, prioritization of the projects with timelines. City staff should report how the performance of the TSP is being measured today, what other measurements uh, methods will be considered, and an annual report of these measurements to Council to determine if this method will meet the reductions of the CRO. The Oregon Legislature recommends scenario planning as a primary method to reduce transportation rela related greenhouse gas emissions, which has been used by Lane Council of Governments. The River, Ro River Ridge area that everybody's speaking with tonight on uh, North Delta Highway could see 672 single family and attached houses being constructed in the next few years. City transportation engineers stated such growth has been planned for with greater than 2,400 daily trips and no mention of a bike, pedestrian, public transit plans, a carbon footprint of the projects in relation to the climate recovery ordinance. Last week, the governor had a news conference at the Beltline proclaiming the state has funding for phase one of the Beltline Delta Highway Interchange project. She did not mention this project's impact on emissions. She did not mention this project's impact on how it will quantitatively meet the targets of the climate recovery ordinance. Does the city know the emission quantities of the projects and will it set back the benchmarks and goals of the climate recovery ordinance? This information needs to be determined and conveyed to the governor and the state before the projects are allowed. The climate recovery ordinance authorize, should authorize the project not the governor, the state, or the city, the Climate Recovery Ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Mark Crenshaw, followed by Wally Anderson. All right, Mayor, uh, uh, Councilors and Commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. Uh, my name is Mark Crenshaw. I'm the mayor of Junction City, living at 1280 Oak Street in Junction City. The uh, I, I admire your perseverance to hear lots of testimony tonight uh, to encourage you to uh, uh, keep the Beltline Delta Interchange as part of your TSP package. Um, I also want to tell you that I stand in support of that, but I'd like to bring another perspective, and that is uh, from the rural community. The uh, uh, Eugene is the, is the hub of uh, all of the communities in the area, and we uh, actually consider ourselves to be part of the Eugene community. We conduct a, a majority of our commerce here. Uh, our employment opportunities are in majority in the Eugene area and, and then also the, our, you know, our retail purchases are made in the brick and mortar stores uh, right here in town. Therefore, what that means to us is that we must travel on Beltline Road and quite frequently choose to take the, the Delta uh, interchange. So we're very concerned uh, that uh, that the safety of that interchange be improved, that the convenience of it also, so that it becomes a, a smoother thoroughfare. Uh, that's that is very important to us. So thank you for hearing that perspective. Thank you. Next is Wally Anderson, followed by John Hagen. Hi, Wally Anderson, 3288 Lake Mont. Uh, we live out in the area that we're talking about out here. Um, I don't envy your position uh, of taking a look at this. I'm on the Airport Advisory Committee and working on the master plan there, so I, I'm aware of the complexity of these problems that you face. Um, I won't even speak to Delta Highway because you've heard enough about that right now. But the things that I guess are concerning to me and that we haven't addressed tonight is the impact upon the schools. Uh, they are uh, almost at capacity right now. And I, I think that should really be considered in this uh, development. And uh, also the bike traffic has really increased out there. It's become a riding circle now for a lot of people doing uh, exercise. And uh, it's definitely not safe right now. I don't know what you guys have planned or what is in the plan for parks, 
but there are very, very few park uh, spaces out in that area right now, and I think that needs to be considered. The, um, there was a, about 18 years ago, Ayers Road needed improvement, and there was a process that was set up by the city and one of the engineers to go ahead and have a design team from the community involved in that. I happen to be on that. And uh, because it's a secondary road, the whole idea behind the, the de design of that was calming effect of slowing that traffic down and getting it down to about 25 miles an hour. That's what, what we're hoping for. People complain now because they go 25 miles an hour and there's speed bumps and all those things were taken into consideration. It did exactly what it was supposed to do. So I think if you can figure out a way to bring the community into this process and not develop the animosity, it will be a win-win situation. Thanks. Thank you. John Hagen, followed by Russell McDanny. Good evening. My name is John Hagen. I live at 255 Hunsacker Lane. And I'm here to voice my concerns about the Beltline Bridge. Okay, so last time I was here, a lady from the ODOT was here. Her name is Franny. She testified that she thought the bridge was a glorious item. Well, she told I talked to Becky and she got me a meeting with her she said that's a hundred million dollar project and comes across the river goes into Delta's property which is urban growth boundary which there's supposed to be a law against that <clears throat> and it comes right down Beaver Beaver goes into Hunsacker conveniently the map cut off the four-lane highway that comes into Hunsacker Hunsacker is currently a two-lane road the county wants to give it to the city. In order to give it to the city, they have to do the city criteria, which includes sidewalks, bike lanes, water gardens, and they're going to take the existing lanes of 11 feet per side and make them 10 feet per side. My comment was, <clears throat> how are you going to put a four-lane highway into a 20-wide road? Okay. And she says, well, we're not going to increase the traffic. Well, she either lied to me or she doesn't know what's going on. Either way, she should be reprimanded or fired. Okay, so <clears throat> my point is, right now, Hunsacker in the westbound is bumper to bumper, and she's right. They can't add any more traffic to that because it's a parking lot now. Okay, so their $100 million bridge is going to be a parking lot also because two lanes into one lane is not going to work. So the county and the state and the city, there's three hands there. Nobody knows what's going on. You know, they don't plan together. So my plan was to take all that traffic that's in the pinch on the Beltline Bridge that they're trying to get rid of, put it down Delta Highway. These people over here already want to widen it. So let's widen it, put the bridge out to Wilkes Drive, take the traffic out there, and then if they need to come back to the sit, you know, Eugene side, they can come back and there's no traffic going that direction at night. You know, it's empty. So it's, like I told Becky, it's kind of like a pipes, you know. You got a three inch pipe, you got three areas going into that three inch pipes, and it's in a two and a half block area. And these cars are like solid waste. There's gonna be a backup. And it's going to stink big time. Thank you. Thank you. Russell McDanny, followed by Kevin Reed. <coughs> uh, thank you. Um, I wanted to say congratulations to Commissioner Williams for your appointment. Also to Commissioner Farr, I mean, we didn't have to have this this public hearing tonight. I know that through your guidance, uh, you got it. So thank you. We appreciate very much the opportunity to address you. Also, Mayor of Venice, uh, you did attend the Northeast uh, Neighborhood Council, and thank you very much. So I know that you all are uh, relatively aware of what's going on, not relatively, very well aware of what's going on 
a North Delta Highway. My name is Russ McDaniel. I live at 3355 North Delta Highway uh, in a senior community. And uh, can you see me all right? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm at that age where invisibility is a problem. <laughs> the first thing you lose is your gravitas when you retire. <clears throat> and I think the second thing is being visible. So if you, uh, if you see me, that's part of the battle. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, North Delta uh, Highway at the interchange of uh, Delta and, uh, and of course, uh, Beltline. And it's, you've heard it all already, so there's nothing I can really add to it that isn't already uh, known by you, you, you people. But I do want to talk a little bit about the safety record of that particular interchange in just maybe a little different perspective. You know, if you visualize a new company or a company in your jurisdiction, and if it had the same safety record that Delta Beltline Interchange has, it would probably be shut down due to safety concerns. I know OSHA would not allow a company to operate. It had the same kind of a safety record. Now envision the CEO standing up uh, at this company with this deplorable safety record and announcing that they make 90,000 widgets a day and they've gotten a contract to build another 3,000 widgets a day. So instead of 90,000, it's going to be 93,000. But they're not going to uh, improve the safety. They're just going to in, you know, in, in, uh, increase the uh, the speed at which they produce those widgets, uh, but do nothing about the infrastructure to, to make it a safer environment. Uh, I don't think we would uh, tolerate something like that very long. So I get thinking about, you know, the safety issue and how it can happen. And you have to realize that someone has said already three minutes. <laughs> You have, you have three seconds left. <laughs> well, I can't say it, but uh, I do want to add that the people in Lake Ridge, there's another abutting senior community. It's Falconwood. And out of that, some 700 people. We're not candidates for bicycles. Thank you. But thank you for your time. Thank you. Next up, Kevin Reed, followed by Lori Powell. Good evening, counselors. Um, my name is Kevin Reed. I live at 3117 Riverbend Avenue. I'm also the chair of the Neighborhood Association out in North Eugene. And I think, uh, you know, just our last Neighborhood Association meeting where we introduced our new mayor, we had 110 people show up. The speakers that were there were from ODOT and from the City of Eugene Transportation. Two weeks ago, we had the builders, the developers of the River Ridge Golf Course show up, and we had 83 people show up at that meeting. So I think the common theme that we're hearing here is that there's a great deal of concern in that area about what's happening in their neighborhood. And we spent the last three years educating and enlightening and informing our neighbors on how to get actively involved and in showing in the way that they're, the way they attended the meeting tonight and the way they attend all the meetings in our neighborhood. And what they're asking for and what they're hoping for is that we can get the city and the county to act in collaboration with the neighborhood so that we can deal with some address and address some issues of safety and concern that are really having a negative impact on our quality of life out in that area and have been for quite some time. And they're going to get worse. They're not going to get any better. And we need to know. They want to know that they're being heard by you. And, it's, and through the actions and what we've seen happen lately, there's no proof of that. And so I'm asking, I'm begging you, please show us that you can hear us and that you care about what you hear from us in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Lori Powell, followed by Patty Hine. Good evening, counselors and commissioners. My name is Lori Powell. I live in Ward 1 at 1147 West 27th Place. I'm asking the council and commissioners to assure us that you will approve an amendment to the TSB at some point to include a greenhouse gas emission measurement system linked to benchmarks 
and uh, benchmarks in the Climate Recovery Ordinance. N not including an emission measurement system in the TSB is really not that much different than going to a doctor who doesn't take the time to measure one's blood pressure, pulse, oxygen, saturation levels before, during, and after a medical treatment for a life-threatening illness. We'd be thinking medical malpractice here. Well, we are in the midst of a planet-threatening illness and not allocating the resources and time to measure basic indicators of system health, such as emissions at the local level linked to specific transportation projects, is akin to municipal malpractice and pretty much renders the CRO moot, particularly for the proposed community-wide reductions. That said, I also want to take a, a step back and just really honor how hard you all are working right now. There's so many different issues on your plate um, that I urge you to consider the common threads between the many concerns you're dealing with to make your lives a bit easier. For instance, advocating for the walkable 20 minute neighborhoods, more affordable housing, or simultaneously addressing the issues of the unhoused and climate change in one fell swoop. Thank you so much. Thank you. Patty Hine, followed by Deborah McGee. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Councillors, Commissioners. My name is Patty Hine. I am a, a resident of the county for 25 years. Thank you for taking the time for this extra public comment time for this really important planning that goes into our future transportation plan. As we all know, and I really appreciate the North Eugene residents coming here and sharing their on-the-ground experiences tonight, Eugene is growing, and it's because we're a wonderful community to live in. And you all have the responsibility for making accommodations for this growth, and I don't envy you. It's a complex situation. We want to let you know we're super supportive of our decision makers, and we appreciate that you are making decisions with our future children in mind and the commitments that we have made to them in our climate recovery ordinance. It's no surprise that transportation, like everywhere else, is a large part of the energy that is consumed uh, and is fossil fuel based. This is an opportunity for us to look at bike, ped, increased transit to reduce our emissions and meet our goals for carbon reduction like many of the other progressive communities and cities around the world. I'm just here to encourage you to keep your commitment to the children and their future. We have to prioritize this accessible, safe bike, ped, and extended, not so much gas-fueled automobile transit. This is community building for resiliency in the future so that we can relocalize and be a really revitalized and stronger and more connected community. In the implementation of our TSPC, please ensure we prioritize the integration of these CRO benchmarks and targets for real science-based greenhouse gas reductions. They have to be quantifiable to be, defect, to be effective and it should not be passed without plans to clearly specify such reductions. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah McGee, followed by Rick uh, Ingham. My name is Deborah McGee, and I've lived for the last 30 years at 29755 Lusk Road in the county. Eugene is my city. The city of Eugene has a climate recovery ordinance. The TSPC, the TSP, needs to integrate the climate recovery ordinance. Because we have a CRO, climate impacts need to be an important decision factor for all specific projects. The TSP needs to show quantitatively how it meets those CRO targets. Eugene's Willamette Valley has less than one-tenth of one percent of the original wetlands remaining. As we move toward the inevitable climate chaos caused by climate global warming, we need to protect what remains of our wetlands as they provide necessary ecological services for our survival. Building more roads encourages more driving. It destroys wetlands, wildlife habitat, and peaceful green spaces for humans. Building more roads does not reduce greenhouse gas emissions. A survivable future for humans involves transitioning off of fossil fuels. A survivable future means more public mass transit more bike lanes, more walkable neighborhoods where citizens can get their needs met without driving cars. While we are not adequately making these changes as a society, you have an opportunity to provide leadership with planning, 
actions and resources to encourage the necessary changes. We are in a change or die time. Living our business as usual lives is fueling climate chaos, which will result in an unlivable planet for our children and grandchildren. Scientists tell us we are at 406 parts per million of CO2 pollution in our atmosphere, and that is uncharted territory. The TSP must meet the carbon, carbon reduction targets of the CRO. Thank you. Thank you. Rick Ingham, followed by Elise Self. Yeah, good evening, uh, Mayor, Chair, Councillors, and Commissioners. Uh, I, too, want to echo the comments made earlier. I appreciate you holding a second hearing on such a crucial issue. Uh, my name is Rick Ingham. I'm the City Administrator for the City of Vanita. The address out there is 88184 8th Street, Vanita. I'm here to speak in favor of adopting Eugene's proposed 2035 Transportation System Plan. There is much to like about the plan. First, there is a number of bike and pedestrian projects. Um, all of those will enhance greater uh, uh, connectivity to West Lane County, uh, and I think we're all very much in favor of that. Uh, however, the most important project contained in the plan is the proposed improvements for the Randy Pape Beltline. The Beltline and connection to Highway 126 is a crucial economic lifeline to Veneta, Florence, and other communities up and down the Central Coast. The current freight congestion through the Delta intersection is an impediment to business and economic developments in Westland County. It is only through the proposed improvements that we can be ensured that free-flowing freight movement from Interstate 5 to Highway 126 will continue. So for that reason, we would encourage your adoption of the Elise Self, followed by James Self. Good evening. Some of you have seen me before, and usually I'm here talking about human rights. But tonight I'm here because I'm now a resident uh, at 3355 North Delta Highway, Lake Ridge of Eugene. <clears throat> I'm here to support all of my neighbors and friends who've come to talk about the safety issues of the North Delta Highway. And I also just wanted to add that we not only go out for doctor's appointments, some of us go out for protests and marches and other things like that. <laughs> We're a pretty varied community. <laughs> um, I want to thank you very much for your service. I know these issues are not easy, and I know you all take them very seriously. We are concerned about the safety out there. We just want to be able to leave our homes and to have all the other families that are going to be moving out there to leave their homes and to be able to move around in a safe way. So I thank you for considering this. Thank you. James Self, followed by Zach Mulholland. Good evening. My name is James Self, and I live with Elise, uh, 3355 North Delta Highway in Lake Ridge. Um, this whole conversation sort of strikes me as the chicken and egg, you know, what comes first? Does development come first, and then it follows that you have to enhance the infrastructure, or does it go the other way around? Or does it go simultaneously? Well, I'm a, an interested uh, resident, but I don't know a lot about the transportation plan. I know a whole lot more about River Ridge uh, from the developers than I know about what the transportation plan is. I can say this, that unless there's a concurrent development of the infrastructure in North Eugene, we're going to have major problems, and you've heard them I can't add anything new to that, but I would say that uh, transportation needs, whether it's bicycle, foot traffic, public transportation, or automobiles, are all going to be very poorly served by these new developments if there is no development of the infrastructure. So I would encourage you to put that at the top of the list of priorities, and I know you've got many things that should be there. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Zach Mulholland, followed by Janet Bevert. I'd 
Hello, uh, Council, Commissioners. Uh, thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, my name is Zach Mulholland. I uh, live in Ward 1. Uh, here to <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> talk about the TSP. Uh, I guess where I'd like to start is think about uh, kind of my dream for the future of transportation here in Eugene. Uh, when I look out 20 years from now, uh, I think of compact, uh, walkable communities, uh, bike lanes, uh, connected by public transit. Uh, I think of the future of uh, autonomous vehicles that will drive very close together so that we're gonna need less infrastructure for more cars uh, that will come pick you up where you need to go and drop you off where you need to go and uh, won't need necessarily a parking space uh, so that we can fit more buildings into less space. So I just kind of want to uh, us to think in that context a little bit of when we're building really big projects that are gonna last a really long time, that we wanna think of what the future is gonna be like and not necessarily base all of our projections on what's happened in the past. Uh, so as the city looks to move, uh, move forward with the TSP and some major projects within it, uh, my understanding is that the city would like to do some greenhouse gas analyses with the road projects contained within uh, the TSP uh, in order to prioritize those projects. Uh, my hope will be that uh, before any public do uh, Eugene dollars are spent uh, on these major road projects, uh, that these analyses will be done and that uh, any uh, transportation demand management options can, that can also be looked at as alternatives to uh, large builds can be looked at. Uh, some of these single projects are tens of millions, if not more than $100 million. Uh, whereas our bike lane, if we're going to build that out over 30 uh, 20 years, uh, is about $60 million. So uh, with limited funds, uh, making sure that we're spending our dollars the best place that we possibly can uh, is really important. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, I, I support safety measures, but if we're going to expand roads, we need to think about that in the context where uh, hopefully in the future we'll have a lot more people working at home and living close to where they work. and we won't need as many uh, transportation miles to do the same amount of work in the future. Thank you. Thank you. And the final uh, uh, citizen is Janet Bevert. So I'm going to explain this instead of reading, which I typically do. Janet Bevert, I live at 2915 Charnelton Street. Betty is my representative. Um, I've heard no mention about um, congestion. And I know that nobody here wants more congestion. And yet um, the LOS is recommended to be lowered from a D to an E all over um, town, which would uh, foster more congestion. So I don't quite understand that and that seems Ill illogical to me. Um, I come from the perspective of dealing with a lot of things around South Willamette the 20 minute neighborhood that we were so sold on offered really no affordable housing, but did offer gentrification and the removable, uh, removing of affordable housing for people in that area. Um, I've spoken with people involved with Vision Zero. I support that. And yet they do not want all people to wear helmets, bike helmets. I think that is ridiculous. Um, you could ask any doctor or nurse about that. And oftentimes they refer back to a vehicle as causing the issue with a bicyclist and that's not necessarily true at all. Um, the other thing is I would like the requirement, since we're doing bike lanes in town, that if there is a bike lane and there's a sidewalk, the sidewalk's for the pedestrian and the bike lane is for the bicyclist. With South and Lamet being restriped, I can't tell you how many people I'm seeing riding down the sidewalks and not using the bike lanes. Um, the complete street idea has the um, expense of sidewalks to people that I don't think the general public is aware what this could possibly mean to them. Um, as far as uh, South Willamette, um, the fire station did not want to have the restriping done and yet that was not listened to. And with the possibility of earthquake and flooding, if the dams go, 
um, that could be the only fire station that is not going to be underwater if you look at the uh, flood maps that have been put out. Um, Terry Harding said at one meeting that we have a 50-year urban reserve of land inventory for development. If that's the case, I don't quite understand the drastic need for densification at this point. Um, Elijah Kaczynski, if we can, did a study um, around asking about congestion and that turned, uh, asking about traffic and congestion was the number one traffic issue for citizens wanting that to be addressed and bike issues were lower down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that ends our public testimony. Do you want to close this for the board? Uh, are you going to close yeah. the public hearing? Uh, I close the public. That ends the testimony. Okay. Yeah. Right. So you close the public. So I close that. Right. Close the public hearing on the record. All right. Questions, comments from city councilors? Anyone in the queue? Four comments? No, one in the queue? County? The board, any questions or comments? Commissioner Sorensen. Thanks a lot. Um, I saw the um, email from uh, Rob Zako about uh, some requests that, uh, that uh, his organization, uh, Better Eugene, Springfield Transportation had, and I'm wondering, uh, in light of uh, Ms. Taylor's, uh, uh, Ms. Becky Taylor's um, uh, request for questions, whether uh, she could look at that email and give us back a response. Seems like those are some pretty good suggestions that we ought to uh, think about. Um, He's got some uh, VMT uh, measurements of multimodal transportation system performance. And, um, and then separately, because I don't think this um, really ropes in the uh, comments of some of the people that talked about uh, connecting Eugene's um, climate ordinance to to this, um, that seems to be, on the one hand, there's a policy for the climate ordinance, which I don't pretend to be an expert on, but it seems like it has something to do with climate change, and uh, and transportation, which is one of the major contributors of of uh, you know uh, greenhouse gases, and it seems like if we're going to have a meaningful um, Climate change ordinance, which I'm in favor of, we got to have it, you know, mean something when it comes to things like big picture things like housing, transportation, uh, and other other big contributors. So, I'd really like to see those two questions answered. Um, and uh, these uh, deaths that we're seeing are rather uh, unprecedented. Uh, well, among other people, the, the Board of Commissioners has had uh, extensive work sessions on, well, why is this happening? Why, why, since we were on top of the decline in, in deaths and carnage associated with drinking and driving, why are not we now experiencing these big spikes? And Lane County is, um, incidentally, the highest death county in the state now, eclipsing counties that are much larger than we are in population. So it's something that our leadership, the sheriff, the transportation, uh, uh, public works director, our board are taking seriously. And I, I would like to see some attention on that too. Like, are we gonna get more deaths or fewer deaths with this plan? Um, and uh, those are some comments, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sorensen. Before I invite further questions, um, Mr. Clark, I have a question for you. Um, I'm following a script, and with the stroke of gav the, the gavel, I just closed the record. Can you explain that? <laughs> um, well, or, or was I correct in closing the record at that point in time? Well, I, it, 
might make sense to have a board discussion about whether you want to leave it open and, and then have a quick uh, vote if you want to close it officially. Um, it's a it's a legislative matter, and the board can consider stuff in the record and, frankly, stuff that comes in after the record or whatever you want in making legislative decisions. Uh, so it's not as technically important to open and close the record, but it does make sense to discuss it just so the citizens listening have a sense of whether they can still submit written records in. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Then at this point, I'll call, consider the last gavel and in appropriate gavel. The record, the county record, is still open. The public hearing is closed. The record is still open. Commissioner, Commissioner Bozovich. Thank you. And I just want to thank everybody that came to testify tonight. Um, very familiar with the North Delta area. Um, one of my early political mentors was Tony Nathan that lived on Delta Pines and went in and out of that neighborhood a lot. And Jean knows I've been in and out of her neighborhood quite a few times and made those turns on North Delta. In addition, way back in my engineering days, I, I designed parts of the River Point subdivision and um, the water system in Ashley Estates. So I, I've been around that area for a while, in addition to being a cyclist that uses that section of North Delta to get the airs, to get to Honeywood, to take that little cut through off the cul-de-sac over to Dale to get out to County Farm Road and up to Coburg. Um, and, and so I, I, I know those couple tight spots where there's an island in the middle, and it is nerve-wracking as a cyclist when you're in that lane, and it's a big truck that's coming by while you're in that lane beside that, that island. So. I agree that, that maybe we need, need to take a look at North Delta in addition. I will note that the Beltline facility plan is kind of silent on what happens north of Green Acres Road. It shows actually a divided road at that point, like it's supposed to be improved at least to some extent to the north, but really doesn't say how far. So um, that, that'll be something that I think uh, may need to be picked up in the future. Um, so I, I, I hear the folks talking about that, very familiar with it. Um, but otherwise, I think you know, I appreciate the testimony from uh, Junction City and Benita. Uh, I understand that the mayor of Florence submitted written testimony uh, similar. Beltline um, Highway is a regional transportation facility. And I know that there's some concerns about the, the climate uh, reduction ordinance climate recovery ordinance um, and whether or not that project fits in. I hope we can take a look at what the idling uh, GHG uh, generation is in that area because I know that when I was trying to get home after we appointed Mr. Williams last Wednesday night, I came to a standstill between um, Valley River Drive and Good Pasture Island Road and did not get across the Malamute River for another 45 minutes. Uh, that night, so I don't know how many GHGs my automobile put out at that time. I'd also uh, ask people to think, is uh, automobiles in 20 years, in 2035, at, at the build out of this plan, will they be fueled by petroleum? Will we see a greater mix of electric vehicles at that time? And is that going to change? And will that change the calculations? So um, otherwise, I've read the plan really carefully. There's a lot of great things in there. There's a lot of hard work that's been done by Eugene's um, staff, uh, and I appreciate the work that's gone into this. Thank you, Commissioner Bozovich. Commissioner Williams? I have no comment. Okay. Um, before, I, before I begin to make my comments, I'd like to thank Mr. McDaniel for pointing out that this is, in fact, Commissioner Williams' first meeting. Um, welcome to the Board of Commissioners, welcome to Harris Hall, and welcome to one of the most fun times we ever have, and that's meeting with our colleagues in the Eugene City Council. <laughs> thank you. Uh, welcome today. Um, so our, the, the record is open. I have a couple of um, questions that I don't need answers to at this point in time. We'll, we'll cover that when we get into deliberations. Um, the first one... Actually, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Uh, Doherty. Uh, you turn right, 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 you get to the traffic light and turn left. Is that, did I get that right? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, and then someone else asked, um, let's see, uh, Ms. Smith, Su Susan Smith, you said, um, do you take into consideration traffic <laughs> analysis, analysis studies? Um, sometimes people think we do traffic analysis studies and then uh, don't take them into consideration. 
So that's, uh, I've heard that said a number of times, but traffic analysis studies do occur prior to uh, much of the, uh, much of the um, transportation improvements that occur. It's not always the case. A uh, couple of questions that I do have. Uh, one surrounds um, something that Commissioner Bozovich just said, and that is regarding uh, areas, uh, roads such as North Delta Highway beyond Green Acres, which uh, really doesn't, uh, isn't covered, as far as I can see in the transportation plan, as far as what happens there. Uh, we all know that uh, River Ridge, the nines initially, and then uh, uh, the other side of the road, the, uh, the lower nine holes on River Ridge is scheduled for development. Um, we've seen the um, number of houses that are in there. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm not, uh, I'd like to have, que have questions answered regarding how well all of those extra houses, uh, they're predominantly single family residents, predominantly R1 in that area. Um, uh, if that's uh, it, what, what uh, transportation plan or what uh, structures or facilities, you call them, what facilities are going to be uh, 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 included out there to make certain that uh, people aren't taking a left on Ayers Road, uh, because Ayers Road is, was built for traffic calming, it's windy, it's got speed bumps, and uh, I don't think too many people who live out there are particularly interested in having that straightened uh, to make a speedway out of it. So uh, I'm a little concerned about that. That's not the only area, which leads to my next question, and that is, um, the last time we had a public hearing, I was on the phone and I, I overheard the conversation uh, regarding what happens if development occurs that uh, isn't scheduled at this, or isn't planned at this point in time, if residential or other development occurs, and this transportation plan that we're being asked to approve, uh, this transportation plan isn't satisfactory to meet the, uh, uh, for instance, expansion beyond the existing urban growth boundary for residential. Uh, so I'd like to hear uh, specifically what the process is and how long that process takes and what delay points can occur during that process. Because I'm concerned, my concern is that uh, uh, once we do, uh, once we do uh, approve this plan, that uh, we're going to have developments that aren't planned at this point in time, aren't scheduled at this point in time, that are naturally going to ha happen. Because uh, uh, we were asked to, um, Let's see, I've got the exact quote here. Um, address the issues of the unhoused and climate change simultaneously. Well, if we're addressing the issues of the unhoused, we need to add more residential properties based upon the, the cost of housing in Eugene, because whether it's rental, uh, single family, uh, R2, whatever it may be, the cost of housing is escalating if you can find a place to live. Consequently, uh, I would anticipate that uh, that uh, residential development beyond the existing boundaries will occur and I just need to know how quickly the transportation plan can be addressed to, uh, to accommodate, uh, the, uh, accommodate building, uh, building the residential development that is necessary. Um, we, we used to have a plan for traffic in West Eugene. Um, the plan included a parkway, the West Eugene Parkway, and uh, the, uh, after the parkway was, uh, um, was uh, met its demise, uh, I'm not convinced that the, uh, that the traffic was mitigated adequately to cover the residential area that's already been, that's already been uh, identified for R1 and R2 development out there. So I need answers to make certain that the, uh, the south, the west Eugene out Route F, Route West 11th Highway uh, 126, is adequate for um, developing the housing that is scheduled to be developed out in that area. And my third question is regarding parking. Um, now, uh, Mr. Mulholland's asked us to uh, see, I think they're called um, autonomous vehicles. I'm pretty excited about that, too. That's, uh, my son's been talking about that for a long time, says uh, 20 years from now you won't even need keys. Just get in and off you go. But in the meantime, in the meantime, we are driving vehicles that require parking. And uh, parking is a necessary part of a transportation plan. And as we're densely infilling, particularly in the River Road area, Santa Clara area, we're densely infilling what used to be large properties. Uh, for instance, there's a development, I believe it's called Echo. It's an Echo housing development out there. When we develop that, the transportation plan uh, should include adequate parking for <laughs> the city's expansion, dense urban infill, which we're all in favor of. And uh, for instance, Echo, uh, my understanding is that it, uh, it only allows one parking space per, per apartment. And those apartments, some of them are three bedroom apartments. Now, uh, whether or not we drive autonomous vehicles, at, uh, whether we drive them or not at this point in time, three bedrooms usually requ requires more than one vehicle. I'd like to state right now that the people who live in the county, which is about from me to you, away from Echo 
apartments are suffering from the people who should have parking available to them on the property, parking in their driveways, on their streets, adjacent to the stop sign. So I'd like to hear uh, comments on how parking to accommodate the dense urban infill that we are taking, that's taking place, how the parking is going to be addressed so that people who live adjacent to and outside, in some cases outside of the city limits, aren't affected negatively by this part of the transportation plan, which is what you, what you do with your car once you park it. Now, we all want people to ride more buses. We all want people to uh, ride more bicycles. And I'm excited about the uh, $20 million bike path. Um, it's all, all pretty exciting. I ride my bicycle quite a bit. Commissioner Bozovic rides almost, I don't know, thousands of miles. Not as much as I used to. Not as much as you used to. But, um, but I like uh, uh, that. So those are my three questions. And then I'd also like to point out that Commissioner Sorensen, uh, before Mr. Z Dr. Zeko arrived in the room, Commissioner Sorensen mentioned the, uh, the letter, that, the message that you sent to us today. That did get covered. Your questions were raised. It is a part of the record. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further questions from the board? Anything from council? Okay, I think we're ready to close the record on this public hearing for the city. Oh, no. So, well, I, what I want to speak to is um, the question of whether you want to, and it was what Commissioner Farr asked oh. earlier. The, so you've closed the public hearing. Um, so the question is, does the board and the council want to leave the record open to allow additional public testimony? Um, for ease of everybody getting the same information, it's nice that it, you all can come um, as an, to an agreement on that. So if one does it, both would do it. So the record has been open since the last public hearing and continued um, until tonight. So during that time, we got additional public testimony. And they have those packets for you. But if you wanted to leave it open for an additional period of time, if you could set a specific time that it would close, um, that would be helpful just to help us educate the public. And thank you. And I, I believe our uh, counsel, uh, Mr. Clark, uh, mentioned that this is not quasi-judicial that we're undertaking here, so it's not as technical as, uh, as, as if uh, some of the land use planning that we that we do take That's part in. That's correct. It's correct in the sense that we don't, I mean, like the ex-party contacts, those kind of things, you'll hear from folks around. When it comes to the record and allowing folks to submit, it's, it's nice from a public outreach perspective if we can, if people know so it's not trickling in and you're able to make your decision based on kind of a finite set. So for ease of our public outreach and also, um, I don't want to buy trouble, but if we need to compile a LUBA record, there needs, to, there needs to be a set of documents upon which you base your decision as the final decision makers. So um, yes, it's not nearly as tight. Um, Mr. Clark is absolutely correct on the quasi-judicial, but if we can get some bumpers on it, um, that will help us. And uh, Madam Mayor, uh, I am prepared to close the record for the county this evening unless, uh, unless the board has other issues surrounding that. Council, any con content to close the record tonight? Okay, I think we, do we need to vote on that? No, nope, you can just, we can just close the record. gavel out. Okay, the record is closed. And hearing no, uh, no opposition from the board at this point in time for the county, the record is closed. Which doesn't mean you've got to stop talking about it. Okay, Kevin? <laughs> you know my phone number. Thank you all very much for coming, and that ends our meeting.